During the course of the last two months, I have been living in an absolutely enormous 24 bedroom student house in Scarborough. And today I'm going to show you around the network, specifically the kind of Wi-Fi and internet setup that provides the internet access to all of us students here. As this place has five floors, I'm going to first start on the first floor of the house. We are now on the west side of the first floor and this is what greets us. It's a Draytech Weigel 2860N, which is a multifunction modem router. It has an ADSL VDSL modem, which is connected up to an 80 down 20 meg up VDSL circuit over a copper telephone line. And as far as Wi-Fi is concerned, it is 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is switched on on this. The Ethernet port is connected up to an AP on the east side of the first floor, which we will head to next. Now we are on the east side of the first floor and the access point is visible. This is a Draytech Vigor AP902, which is dual band AC. So this has 2.4 gigahertz as well as five gigahertz Wi-Fi. It also has a built-in switch, but only the ethernet port, which is feeding it, is connected. The Draytech Vigor 2860N together with the Vigor AP902 provide wireless coverage to the ground floor, which has no access points, and the first floor, which is where they reside. Now, together, these provide really strong 2.4 gigahertz coverage to the ground and first floors and very reasonable 5 gigahertz coverage as well. Now, let's move up onto the higher floors where things get a little bit more complicated and interesting. So, starting off on the east side of the second floor is another Draytech Vigor 2860N. This is also connected up to an 80 down 20 up VDSL circuit and has 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi enabled, except this has three ethernet cables coming out. Two of them connect directly to other access points on this floor and above, and one of the ethernet ports goes to the basement, which I will talk about towards the end. So if we move to the other side of the second floor, the west side, there is another Vigal AP902, and this is doing 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi again. The ethernet cable, the yellow one, connected up to a power line adapter is a red herring. That's just a colleague's connection to their computer, which doesn't have a Wi-Fi card. We are now on the top floor of the house, the third floor, and on the east side, where there is another Vigor AP902, very much the same as the others, except this has got two ethernet ports in use. One goes back to the Vigor 2860N on the east side of the second floor, and the other ethernet goes over to an access point, which is another Vigor AP902 on the west side. The basement has a rather ancient Vigor AP700, which is N2.4 gigahertz only, and it is fed off the second floor 2860N, as I alluded to earlier on in the video. Channel management wise, all the access points use 20 megahertz channels on 2.4 gigahertz, and these are mostly alternate as well. On 5 gigahertz, the access points on the second and third floors use 80 megahertz channels with a center frequency of channel 42. Meanwhile, the 5 gigahertz access point, so the AP902 on the east side of the first floor uses 20 megahertz channel for some reason, which is channel 36. Performance wise, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi generally saturates the line. So whatever bandwidth is available on the line you can use. So typically that means about 70 megabits per second plus down and about 18 to 19 megabits per second up. 
2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi is quite congested thanks to all the access points and Wi-Fi from the neighboring buildings. So its performance tends to be about only about 20 down and varying upload from about 10 to 20 megabits per second. Just for those curious or who have had trouble keeping track, here is a schematic layout of the Wi-Fi and internet setup here. And thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.